Okay, this is the video solution for uh, the uh, homework in uh, lab four uh, afternoon session. And uh, what we are dealing with here is a, a shrink fitted part, so aluminum shrink fitted in brass. The diameter of this aluminum piece is a little bit bigger than the other one. And uh, you, uh, you are asked to use the most appropriate element, okay? And obviously, in this case, it's going to be solid elements. That's what we're going to be using. And uh, also use as many planes of symmetry as necessary. Now, when you look at this problem, uh, this uh, if you look at the vertical, uh, vertical cut here, a vertical cut along, for example, that top hole, and then you take a 45-degree sector, notice that that particular unit, is repeated eight times around the circle. Okay, that being the case, the, the the plane of symmetry that we're going to take is, of course, halfway, definitely halfway through the, the part, 0.5 inch uh, through the thickness. And then we take a 45 degree sector here, which is cut like that. That's the, 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 the most appropriate, uh, the smallest unit uh, for symmetry taken into account. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to start doing the uh, the uh, inside the uh, the inside part first. So now I just want to remind you that when you do shrink fit problems, you have two choices. You can make the size without the size of this inner disc without taking 0 0.002 into account, and then declare the uh, the uh, the basically the overlap being half of it, 0 0.001, or you can actually make the cut, uh, make the make the part uh, with the uh, the radius, for example, 3.001, and then again declare the overlap to be 0 0.001. The results are going to be very close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the nominal diameter of three, a nominal radius of three for the inner part. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We go here. Uh, first of all, let's start with the product file. Start, oops, right here. Start the uh, product. Okay. Good. And immediately I'm going to save this thing. File, save management. Save as. My desktop, a new folder, and the new folder is going to be uh, shrinked. Lab four. How about afternoon? Okay. Okay. All right. Now we're going to insert our first part, insert a new part in there, and I'm going to call it the uh, uh, properties aluminum. Let me call this thing uh, inside piece. And by the way, it's made of aluminum. So this is the name that I'm going to give it. And I'm going to copy this. Copy because this is the instance name. The part name is actually right here. Paste. Say OK. Notice that this has changed. Now I'm going to make the part. So expand the tree here. Double click on this uh, branch so that you go in the part design, which is right there. You can see that. On that vertical plane, I will sketch uh, that uh, uh, circle, 45 degree sector, so something like that. You clean it up here. So, uh, yeah, actually, let me do the following. Let me do another one. Okay, so uh, clean it up from there to there. 
uh, this top one, uh, if I'm doing the top one, I want to take the circle into account, no problem. And then another one from here to here. And we're going to do a quick trim, first of all. So uh, the quick trim, the eraser right there, gets rid of this and that and that and that. Uh, why does might as well do the uh, circle here and we clean it up oh this one is the outside this is the inside one right uh, yeah that's the inside one does not have a, a circle up there so let's uh, dimension these so this is going to be uh, that radius is going to be three remember I, I don't do not use 3.00 uh one i use three the nominal value and this one is i believe radius is one the whole inside hole uh, radius one okay so what i'm drawing here for you is this yellow piece basically okay oh sorry this radius should be 0.5 that's where it is it's diameter one 0.5 okay that's what we got right there all right so uh, oh this angle 45 degrees where is that uh, dimension between this line and that line 45 exit we're gonna we're gonna pad it by 0.5, half the height of that disc, because we are assuming these are discs which are shrink fitted inside of each other. Uh, 0.5. Good, and we're gonna apply material uh, to this, which is aluminum. So uh, let me see. Here's material. Apply material on this part. Not on the product, on this part, aluminum, and we say okay. Good. All right. So if I go all the way to the top and click on this floppy, it's going to save this part in that folder. Good. Uh, I, why don't I change the, the color of this also? So uh, let me see now. Uh, right click properties, graphics, graphics tab. I'm going to change that thing to uh, yellow so that it looks just like that. Actually, it looks like you can do it from here. So close that, do it from there. Right click properties on the graphics. Now you can change the color to green. Uh, sorry, yellow. That's what I meant. Okay, good. Uh, now we're going to insert a new part in there. Always say no. Try reading it once, at least you know what it says. I'm going to change the name of this. Right click properties. Since I already copied that on the product, I already copied the previous one, paste, except that I've fix this outside piece and it is a steel steel say okay oops i forgot to do the this was the instance name so let me try to try it again right click properties 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 yep now let me copy this right click copy and scroll down and there is the actual part number or part name paste say okay good now to make it i just double click on that now there are different ways of doing this thing here's the way i'm going to do that on that uh for example again on the xy plane right here please notice that there are many ways of doing this thing i'm going to do this okay very good and i'm going to project uh this arc yep project that 
and yeah that's uh, that's that's good uh, exit or uh, not exit so this is projected if i hide this thing you can see what happened there we are and do the rest of it now the diameter the radius of that outside gray piece is five so let me go and uh, why don't i do this I draw a line from here and we're going to clean this up not to worry okay i think that's coincident you can see that i am pretty sure these are coincidence if not we're going to fix it okay uh <clears throat> for example you can check it this control that are they coincident yeah they're already coincident you can see this all right good and the circle uh, an arc basically okay the center is here it starts there goes there all right and this radius is five radius is five okay and uh i'm doing the the gray piece here okay so let's uh uh complete this line from there to there okay let's do a bit of a cleanup here i use the quick trim to get rid of this okay and now i have to uh i mean notice that because i projected i don't have to make this angle 45 degrees because it's already 45 but that's up to you. Uh, now, this one, there's a circle here. For example, there's a circle like that, half a circle, a quarter circle, something like this. And we're going to clean it up. I wanted to do a better job, no problem from there, control that line. I make it coincident so that it wraps it up okay good now the radius the radius of this guy is uh, uh, 0.25 okay so let's put a radius here Point 0.25 okay and the distance from that point the center of this to the center of the assembly is uh, uh, four okay so that is this dimension see that this dimension right there so this dimension from this point to that point uh, should be four Okay, and do a quick trim to clean this up. Basically, we gotta get through this. Good. Exit. All right. Now, if you want to see the other piece, the other piece which is in in which is hidden, it's right there. Let me bring it in the front so you can see it. We're going to pad this thing up by 0 0.25, uh, by 0.5. Now, once again, I want to remind you that I could have drawn this yellow piece with that distance being 3.001 instead of 3, but I used the nominal one. The results are going to be very close to each other. Okay, good. Uh, let's apply the material to this thing. Apply uh, properties on that piece. Uh, that's steel. We say okay. Uh, yep, that's pretty much it. And we're going to we go all the way to the top, all the way to the top, and we uh, save this. Floppy. Click on the floppy, it's going to save this new part. We haven't made any changes to the other one, so we don't, it's going to do it anyway. So now we're done. So we're going to go to generative structure analysis or analysis and simulation. 
generative structure analysis. We don't want to do any fancy stuff. Uh, if you, for example, you know how to refine the mesh in area that you may want. Let me see actually what the problem is asking. Uh, use, yeah, it doesn't say anything about defining around the hole, but if you did, if it did, you could. Uh, this is, by the way, the, 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 the break, because this was a, uh, from a previous test, this is how the points were broken down. And read this thing carefully. It says, if it doesn't run, it's automatically discounted by whatever. Now, uh, you want to look at the mesh, right click, mesh visualization. Okay. Now you know what? What if what if we wanted to make a fine fine mesh here? So let's do that. Deactivate this. Okay. So let me hide this. Uh, you know how to refine the mesh model manager where the traffic light is. Click on local mesh size. You select. The, it says well which one of these you want to define. Obviously it's the mesh right now. It's the mesh for the uh, the uh, the aluminum is that I want to define it says okay where it's right there and this is this is the size that it takes which is fine for me and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side okay I want to do the same thing on the other side so let's do another one this time it's that mesh that I want to define it said well where where is it well it's, the part is in hiding so let's go get it that side and this size is fine for me Okay, let's bring this thing in the front so you can see it. Okay, so activate the mesh, right click, mesh visualization. You see that that, that interface you have finer mesh. I was not I didn't ask you to do it, but you should be able to do it on test fast. Right, right there, you can see that. So deactivate. Good. Now uh, let's see now. Uh, we're gonna make these surface sliders because this is a plane of symmetry. That is a plane of symmetry. I cannot. I can do them all in the same place. Uh, this is a plane of symmetry. That is a plane of symmetry, and that is a plane of symmetry. And the bottom for both of them, because remember we cut the disc through half the height. Okay. So these are all the uh, things that I want. I think we did all of them. Yeah. Cancel that. We have our surface slider here. Right there. Now, to create a uh, the uh, pressure fit, you have to create an analysis connection. Need this uh, analysis connection between these two mating surfaces. So, right click this. First component is going to be that face. Second component is going to be the one, the one that I hit, which I can either get it back or just go back in the hidden space and select it. Right. Let's go. Uh, let me bring this thing in the front. Okay. So we created our connection. It is right here. You can give it a name. You could have given it a name, or you can do it now. We don't want it. So go to now. Go to the uh, connection properties. You see this? You see that? First, we created the analysis supports. General analysis connection. Now we have to see what kind. These are face to face connections, so expand this thing. Look for here something that looks like a pressure fit. It's right here. Pressure fitting. Click on it. It says, okay, where is that connection? It's right there. And what is the value? It is how much they have inter inter interfered with each other. It's uh, 0 0.01, right? So this thing was the di diametral interfer a diametral size was 0 0.002 so they have actually should be penetrating each other by 0 0.001 so let's see if we got it yep it just happened to be the right value because last time i did this thing maybe a year ago it had the same value uh, now let's change the analysis first of all file save management uh, there's the analysis save as in that folder uh is that the right folder yep shrink fit lab for afternoon right there let me say okay 
and we're going to run it. Okay. Okay. After it finishes, you can actually show, show look at the deformation, and I'm going to change the rendering here to the edges. You can see that there's all kind of junk here in the middle, and the reason this is happening is because this uh, steel piece is going to be pushed out. The, the the aluminum is going to be pushed in. So you don't want to display these contact elements. Just double click on this thing on the selection. Just use the first one. And the second one, don't show any, don't show any contact, uh, contact elements. Okay, R right there. Now, uh, if you see this gap here, that's because of the scale. Go, go, put it on the real scale. So real scale is one. Oops, one. Say okay. Notice that it doesn't show you any gap. Okay, so this is actually what happened. If you look at the deflection, double click and once again change the. Uh, just show me the uh, the 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 actual elements not all the artificial ones that were created because we have to do uh, uh, pressure fitting and things like that and then uh, double click uh, actually uh, just change the rendering to material shading and change this uh okay maybe i should ask for the uh, average iso yeah and change the scale to one so that you don't see that artificial gap there, which is artifact, basically. And finally, you can look at the von Mises stress. It's the same story. Uh, now, uh, just double click on, uh, uh, just double, uh, just click on uh, the scale, make it one, and you're gonna see that, okay? And that uh, kind of takes care of what, uh, what we did. Uh, what I would like to do is uh, go to my uh, geometry. B by the way, look, the, the maximum stress 9.09, okay, which is at the interface basically. If we go here to uh, the, uh, I wish aluminum, it was the aluminum part that I used, three, three radius being three inches. So let me go there. Let me go to that sketch and change that to 3.0, 3 .001. in other words, take that uh, initial penetration, exit, and let's run it, let's go here, run it, And, and now look at the uh, this uh, one meter stress. Right click, uh, activate. You see, it, it does change a little bit, but not substantially. I mean, uh, so that initial penetration, whether I include it or not, it did not affect the stress distribution <coughs> significantly. It's, it's up to you. All right, that takes care of...